I just wanted to give a brief demonstration of the new Ornaments in Crime app that I created called Relobby. Uh, if you're not familiar with Ornament in Crime, it's a Eurorack module um, that's designed for processing control voltage or generate control voltage. It's got a Teensy in it, an Arduino Teensy. So it doesn't do a lot of great audio rate stuff, but it's terrific for uh, processing signals in all kinds of different ways. Um, and it, you can download different firmwares for it. The particular firmware I have is the Benisphere firmware, which is derived from the Hemisphere firmware. And they're very similar to each other um, with some minor modifications. Um, with Hemisphere, it divides the module into two halves. You know, if I zoom out here, you can see it's got it's got a screen and apps running on each side, encoders to control the parameters of those apps, trigger inputs for each side, two for each side, and two CV inputs for each side, and then two outputs for each side, um, which is plenty to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, So this is this is derived from the Benisphere's uh, firmware. I uh, copied it on my GitHub and made some modifications to it. I've made some slight changes to some other apps, but the main feature that I've added is the Relobby app, which you could easily add to your own um, by copying the Relobby file into your project on Visual Studio Code. Um, you'll need platform.io to compile it properly, but you can drag it in there, go into the the one file that has all the hemispheres apps listed and add it to the list, and then you should be able to compile it and push it to the teensy on the back of your ornament in crime. That's all a whole bunch of other steps that you can read about on the hemispheres or the Benisphere page. Um, yeah, if you got any questions, let me know. Anyway, you select applications by touching a button to select the panel that you want to change. And you can just go around and you can select whatever application you want. When you're done, you just hit the button again. Um, so we've got the Relobby app over here. It has two outputs. The first output is a Relobby wave. This is a complex waveform created from four oscillators, but there are many ways to generate Relabi, so I don't want to stifle your creativity. The main goal of it is to give you a waveform and gates derived from that waveform that are unpredictable to human beings, but still generative in a way that feels like there's some kind of pattern there. What it's doing when you get gates from it is, is feeling like it's slipping the pulse all the time. So it's related to rhythm, but it's not quite rhythm. You can read all about it at johnburnt.org, who came up or who, I guess, noticed the concept and gave it a name. You can hear a lot of in a lot of free jazz drumming, and you might even think of some other examples you've heard. Anyway, let's take a look at this application. Like I said, the outputs are generating the waveform, which we're seeing over here in this analog shift register, um, sampled. And then the other is a is a threshold, um, and you can see I'm using the uh, the zero two to get two other thresholds from this waveform that I've molted. So it's just coming into the analog inputs here and we're comparing it to two different B values. And then we're getting, you can see the red lights flashing um, as that waveform goes above the threshold and stays above that threshold. So I can use these to make drum sounds. Uh, yeah, here's one channel and the other channel. So it'll get more exciting in a moment. Um, for the on-screen controls, you hit the encoder and it selects the parameter that you want to change. Now, the Teensy doesn't have a lot of memory, so unlike a lot of the apps on the Hemisphere, we're not really able to store these into memory because these are pretty wide, wide ranges and there are four of them. You can see OS1, OS2. OSC 0, OSC 1, OSC 2, and OSC 3. Um, so each one of these that you select has three parameters that you can set. A frequency, cross modulation, and phase. And all of these affect this Relabi wave and, and 
what comes out. Uh, there's also a threshold for that second output um, that we'll hear in a moment. So those are our those are our main parameters. Uh, you can see I've tuned them to be um, kind of in the same harmonic family: six hertz, three hertz, two hertz, one point five hertz. You can experiment with all kinds of different patterns here. Uh, so what I have, let me find the. Uh, this is this is my trigger coming from that. Oh, I'm going to zoom out for you. So this is a trigger coming from this threshold, and I'm going to plug it into a channel of my quadrax that's giving me an envelope for an oscillator. And I'm also going to plug in the outputs from the 02 to trigger my drums. Alright, that gives you a taste. You can hear how it feels like there's patterns. Some instruments are more frequent than others. They tend to kind of recur in the same pattern, but it doesn't always occur where you expect it to be. That's what's exciting about the Relabi Wave. Now, you could probably come up with a more interesting sounding patch than me. I'd love to hear other people use this module. Um, I don't do a lot of like drum and bass patterns myself, and that's something I practice sometimes to try to get better at because I'm more interested in kind of noise music and and other abstractions um, which is why you know I built this Relabi app um, to give me more ways to create CV that's unpredictable um, the um, let's see here so the, the Relabi also has some inputs this first input here or sorry, this first CV input controls the rate at which this Relabi runs. Um, I've got that connected up here to a channel on the Lapsus OS. So if I turn it up, we'll hear the speed increase. The uh, the first trigger input is used to reset all of the component oscillators within the Relabi algorithm. So when that happens, they all get set back to their phase that you've selected on the screen. And that will then give us a pattern that repeats itself. So I'm going to find my, my reset here. This is coming from the uh, Wogglebug that's just got a very slow clock running. Anytime it ticks on, we'll get a trigger into here, and that should reset our waveform. And we'll hear a pattern repeating now. the frequency, this pattern will change. Or if we adjust the phase of an oscillator, the pattern will change. I've rigged both this reset clock and the rate of the Relabi algorithm up to the same channel on the Lapsus OS.
slow this reset down. Now, I'm using the ASR, the analog shift register on the ornament in crime, as a sort of CV delay. So the, the waveform that comes out of the Rolabi goes into the ASR app, and then I'm clocking it with a channel of the quadrax really fast and delaying it by 130 samples or clock ticks. That way I can derive pitch information and rhythm information. So we take the, uh, the gate output of the Rolabi module and the delayed shift register, analog shift register CV, and we do a sample and hold on it. I'm using a uh, ADAC uh, quantizer to do that. So we get we not only have a um, sampled CV signal, but we also get the the uh, the quantization of that, which it would totally change the sound of it too if I made it fully chromatic. Adjust these thresholds. Quite like that pattern. And if we take out that reset clock, then it's going to go off in unexpected directions. Can you predict where the bass drum will hit? All right, there you have it. Um, I hope you uh, try it out and maybe you'll find some interesting uses for it. I'm sure there's a lot more things you could do with it. Uh, yeah, leave me a comment, uh, link some videos. I'd love to see what you're doing.